Next, let's talk about evaluations in telepractice. This section is focused a little more towards therapy, uh, that side of things, rather than say audiology, but some aspects still apply. I've broken down evaluations into paper-based and digital evaluations. So to begin, yes, you can actually implement paper-based evaluations through telepractice. I would again emphasize the importance of using a high quality document camera in addition to your main web camera so that your client can clearly see the pictures, words, and stimuli that you're presenting. However, something to be careful of is copyright protections. For example, Pearson actually requires written permission for use of even holding up the easel to the webcam instead of using their digital software. The same goes for making copies of stimuli for clients to view on their end or scanning things into a digital form to view through screen sharing. If you do decide to use paper evaluations though, Pearson recommends a five theme framework to consider when setting up the evaluation setting. Currently, Pearson is the only provider of digital testing materials called Q Global. They are priced either on a per report basis, typically at about $1 each, or on a yearly subscription at one, three, or five year subscriptions with variable pricing depending on the tests. The tests offer on-screen administration with secure servers. And remember, this is the only approved way to administer tests from Pearson without their express written permission. Now I'd like to take a few minutes to show you an example of what a paper-based assessment looks like. This is a video between me and my fiance Gabriel evaluating his social communication skills using the social language development test adolescent. Now obviously he's not an adolescent and I don't have concerns about his social language skills, but it works for the purposes of illustration. I've used scanned in copies of pictures that I showed during screen shares. To the best of my knowledge, this is allowed by the publisher, unlike what I talked about with Pearson. During this video, take a look at some of the five theme framework that is being implemented. The client and I are comfortable with the technology. I am comfortable administering the test, not only in its paper format, but also in its adaptation for the computer. I've tried to set up the environment for both me and the client in a quiet, neutral area away from distractions. I've also made sure that the format of the test is comfortable for the client and that they only have to look at pictures and respond to me verbally, which is a comfortable means of communication for them. Knowing this, I would be very comfortable using this assessment as an initial evaluation for determination of eligibility after building some rapport with the client. Okay, Gabriel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. So my name's Marissa. I'm going to be evaluating you today to take a look at your speech and language skills, specifically related to how you're using language to communicate socially with other people. Because you had mentioned before that you were a little bit worried about how you might be talking to other people when it comes to solving problems and, you know, reading between the lines, things like that. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So I'm going to show you some different pictures to start with. And we're going to figure out um, how these people are feeling. So I will ask you to pretend to be a person in a picture. All right, I'm going to share my screen with you. So you're going to be able to see the same picture that I'm seeing. Can you see that picture? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Pretend that you are the girl in the beige sweater on the left. What are you thinking? And as far as internet speed, you'll want at the very minimum a bandwidth speed of 384 kilobytes per second. Again, this is the minimum speed recommended to have video and sound transmit back and forth between computers without lag. 
but you may run into difficulty when you're trying to share screens between computers or when you're showing videos. So if you're really seriously considering getting into the telepractice business, I would strongly recommend investing a little bit more money into your venture to make life a little bit easier. This not only ensures that files transfer faster and more smoothly, but it presents a more professional face to clients when you don't constantly have trouble loading sites and then you don't have a scrambled signal on your end. So first, consider upgrading your webcam to a point tilt zoom webcam with a separate document camera. One camera I really like is the Epivo Point to View USB camera available on Amazon for about 75 bucks. It offers a really clear picture of any documents you wanna show, and it functions as a secondary webcam for your face and hands if needed. So think if you're trying to show a client a speech sound production really clearly and you want them to see your mouth, or if you're signing and you want them to see your hands really clearly, that can be really helpful. Um, related to this, in addition to getting professional liability insurance coverage, if you're looking at becoming an independent contractor and not even necessarily starting your own business, you may want to consider getting an LLC. It sounds like a big step, but it's really just a liability um, umbrella to make sure that you're covered in the event that someone does sue you. It serves to divorce your personal finances from your business assets in the case that someone does go after you financially. So if you're serving as an independent contractor for one of these teletherapy or telepractice companies like there are out there, you're a little bit more protected in the event that something does go wrong. So it's just something to consider when you're looking at these um, type of employment positions.